So we had the SID Display Week, and uh, who are you? Um, I'm Terry Sheffer. And uh, so what do you do? Well, right now I'm consulting on LCDs, mainly uh, liquid crystal on silicon displays, but also uh, specialty displays uh, of you know, various kinds, not, not mainstream TV displays. And you've also been involved in the LCD uh, getting into the market? Oh, a long time. I guess since uh, about 19, 1978, uh, I think. Oh no, earlier than that, 1972. So what did you do in the LCD, in the history of the LCD? Well, we, uh, I worked on, worked at a company in Switzerland that made uh, the first twisted pneumatic displays and uh, sold to the Swiss watch industry and also to uh, Japan, to Casio. And then um, worked at the research center at, at Braun Boveri, which was a uh, kind of the Swiss equivalent of Westinghouse. And uh, uh, they were manufacturing the twist pneumatic displays and then our group invented the super twist displays which then was used in all the laptop computers for about three or four years before the active matrix displays became cheap enough to replace them. So, uh, there's, uh, for example, this guy called Martin Schatt, right? Were you working together or...? No, he was at Hoffman La Roche and we were at Brown Boveri and we had a... Uh, Martin Schatt invented the twisted pneumatic display and but at that time, there was a cooperative agreement with Brown Bavari in medical electronics. So Brown Bavari had a, a license, a free license, to manufacture twisted pneumatic displays. And so they set up the, the first factory in Switzerland to make the watch displays. So, uh, is, uh, is, uh, what does Switzerland have to do with the beginning of the LCD? Is it just because of the watches that they did a whole bunch of well, uh, requests and development in that direction? That was a big, a, the, the big uh, reason. I mean, uh, Martin Schott worked at, at Hoffman La Roche, which was a chemical company, and they they manufactured the the first liquid crystal mixtures that were stable at room temperature and had the right properties for the twisted pneumatic display, and then Ron Bavari used that material in their first dis manufactured twisted pneumatic displays for watches. So um, the watches were the customer that back then? They, uh, well, the watch industry in Switzerland was one of the customers, but probably a larger customer was Casio from Japan for watches. And uh, did you imagine that the LCD would be like uh, every single, everywhere? It's no. just LCD. Is that no. what you, is that, was that your plan? No, at the time, of course, everybody was talking about televisions that would hang on the wall, and everybody thought that they would be, you know, maybe just 10 years away. That was in 72? In se yeah, 72. And they said yeah. the hanging wall TVs would happen in, in the 80s. Yeah, I think they, they, they quite uh, overestimated the the developments and the time it was needed to to make a really big screen TV. Why did it take so long? Oh wow, there's... Well, one of the things that needed to be done was the thin film transistor that had to be made reliably and without defects for, you know, millions of transistors on the glass panel. And that was, you know, no easy thing to do. You didn't have so such high resolution in the beginning, right? No, yeah, at the beginning there were... What were you doing, like just a few pixels like, here and there? No, like VGA, VGA resolution. Um, that was on the laptop, right? Yeah, and that, that was considered high resolution in the day, but of course now you've got 4K, which is inconceivable back, back then. So, uh, so you were pretty proud of the VGA laptop displays? Oh yeah, the, you had some. Oh yeah, all the all the computers had VGA. Um, all the laptop computers used VGA for the long time. 
and people were happy. In fact, even the, the first ones were CGA, which was even half the resolution of VGA. And you had you had some of these. You oh, were yeah. using them. Well, uh, we we actually made some prototypes using the Super Twist technology. Uh, that was, you know, without the active matrix technology. So what is that? Segmented? Uh... Well, that was just a, a well, the, the uh, liquid crystal panel was just a, a uh, matrix of columns and row electrodes. And the, the, um, the drive was just on the periphery of the, the glass panels on the, on the edges. And so you, you had to you had to drive, let's say x times y pixels, but you only had x plus y electrodes. So you had to to do some magic to get it to work. And uh, was it kind of like a proud feeling to have these initial first laptops? Because without LCD, your laptop is not possible, right? Well, the first laptops did have um, electro electroluminescence, and they had. Uh, yeah, it was uh, electroluminescent panels, and there was another technology, which was a, a kind of an orange color, um, but certainly not color. So it was special. It was uh, really cool to be able to do that. Oh yeah, I mean to have a display that didn't use a lot of energy, so you didn't have to have a huge battery, and it was very thin, so you could build it into a to a laptop computer. And what was your role in all that? Well, I, I was on a team that invented the Super Twist display, so that was a, a big step forward, which which uh, kind of got the, the whole laptop computer industry going. You call it the Super Twist? Yes. What was twisting about it? Well, it was twisted um, instead of 90 degrees, which was a conventional twisted pneumatic. These were twisted. 270 degrees, and so they had a very uh, steep electro-optic curve, it made it possible to multiplex the display. What does that mean? Well, that means you could you can drive a huge number of pixels with just a, a, a small number of drive electrodes. So it's a big deal, this invention, right? Without that, well, yeah. we wouldn't have a huge well, LCD market today, or what? Well, no, there'd still be a huge LCD market, but um, it would have been delayed probably three or four years. So instead of waiting, uh, uh, instead of waiting 50 years, we would be waiting 53 years for the yeah, for where we are. <laughs> probably something like that. And it kind of jump-started the whole laptop industry. It made made it possible to manufacture huge volumes of laptop displays that and the display looked okay it was it, it of course the thin film transistor displays have much better performance but at least at the time uh, it was quite acceptable so it's a big jump compared to before what you did was just like uh, small watches and, yeah, and calculators watches and calculators right and then because of what you did, it became laptops? It became laptops, right. And then everything else? TVs and stuff? Well, then, and then um, thin film transistors became manufacturable in high volumes at low cost. So at that point, the technology kind of morphed into uh, the thin film transistor displays. And you did all that in Switzerland or no? No, no. no. Where are you based? Where are you from? Well, I was, uh, I'm, I'm from the United States, and I worked in Switzerland for, for 13 years. Why did you go to Switzerland? Why? Yeah. Well, I, I worked at Bell Labs as a, uh, uh, what do they call it, a, a uh, kind of an intern, like a, a two-year postdoc. And after two years, I had to find another job, so I went to... Uh, on the job in Germany at the, at the Fraunhofer Institute. Worked there for two years on liquid crystals and then... Was that nice in Fraunhofer back then? Oh yeah. And then uh, after two years uh, there was an opportunity to join the, the Swiss team at a company called Brown Burberry 
which had which started making the twisted pneumatic displays. And they had a, a research center where I worked, and we were striving to improve the performance of the twisted pneumatic display. And at, at that time, then we got the idea to to go to a super twist display, which made then the high high uh, information content display as possible. So, do you speak German, or you could do everything in English? Oh, I spoke German, uh, but not Swiss German. No. Yeah, it's a little bit different, right? Yeah, it's a it's a, a different language. I, I can understand it, but really not speak it. it was, but everybody just spoke English. It was a big team or a small team? Oh or? no, I spoke English to my boss, but the the my colleagues, I spoke German, and the the uh, we had people I worked with came from some from Czechoslovakia, Italy, some from Switzerland, some from Germany. So we had kind of a, we, we spoke a common language of German, but it was kind of a special German. It was, uh, neither of us were, were highly fluent in German, but we, within a short time, had a common language where we could communicate. So those 13 years were like the cutting edge of what, whatever is possible in Switzerland, or in Europe, or in the world? Well, I think at that, at that point, um, we were the first to manufacture twisted pneumatic displays, so I guess... You, cutting edge in the world. That was definitely cutting edge at the time. And uh, here with the SID Display Week, there's lots of other people. Uh, how is the display market? Is it a lot of people trying to compete on being the most in advanced? And then uh, uh, a few years later, they all meet and, and share stories? Or what happens? <laughs> well, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, it's, it, you know, people get together here and and uh, find out what what other people are doing and and uh, get ideas. Attend the, uh, the seminars, attend the the uh, the meetings, and you know, it's a great opportunity to get up to speed on new technologies and also learn new details about old technologies. In 2019, the uh, display industry is uh, as interested in it as it's ever been, or the well, most interesting it's ever been? There's always something new, and uh, a lot of things are incremental improvements, but then there's also you know, potential breakthroughs. So how does it feel to know that your technology is everywhere? Well, it's, it's it's a good feeling to know that, that the things you worked on have become products and... Changed the world. Well, it, it, yeah, every, everybody... Uh, everybody's got one. Everybody's got a display. This, these, these guys have, <laughs> they all have. How many LCDs do you have? Well, let's see, I got my watch and I got my yeah. iPhone. I guess that's it that, that I'm carrying personally. I have my, my laptop computer in the, in the ballroom in there. New TV? So, and TV in my hotel room. <laughs> So it's everywhere. Yeah. Cool. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to believe. Uh, I, did, I worked at Tektronix for a few years, and it was hard to convince them that the, there was a, split, a display potential beyond the cathode ray tube. That was before, or it was after? That was after Switzerland. So after Switzerland, you went to? To uh, Tektronix. Which is based in? In Oregon. And you tried to convince them what? We tried to convince them that, that liquid crystal displays were, they should really start paying attention to liquid crystal displays because cathode ray tube days were, were just about over. And they, uh, they listened to you? No. <laughs> so I left after five years. And then what? And then I went to InFocus Systems, which developed the uh, projection displays for for uh, ball, uh, boardrooms and conference rooms. Is that LCD projectors? Yeah. yeah. How about the DLP? Is completely different? You didn't work with that? No, it. no, I didn't work with that. But it was a competing technology. And InFocus Systems also uh, sold DLP projectors. Nice. Projectors are really awesome, too. Yeah, but of course the, the, the uh, rear screen projectors that was a big deal for quite a while, but uh, very popular in the U.S. But then, now, one, once the 70-inch TV screens became available, that, in, in fact, long before that, the, the, the 
bottom just dropped out of the rear projection television market. Nice. So is a is a fun uh, industry to work in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Is the coolest one. You recommend? <laughs> oh, I don't know about somebody just starting out. But what they should do if they start now? You just make iPhone apps? No, I think they should go into uh, uh, genetic engineering. You know, mm. uh, gene genetic modification technology. That's just a nice. a huge new field. Could potentially use displays to modify genes, no? Well, I think dis displays and computers play a huge role in that. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. I don't want to take too much time because uh, maybe right. you want to be networking here at the SID Display Week. <laughs> yeah, right. it's fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right.